I didn't get the old uh, MP3 recorder going. Okay, this is uh, my uh, surplus cassette tape series. This particular one is uh, oh, a little intro if you didn't already know. I bought a huge collection of Army surplus training tapes. Uh, we're talking about 300 pounds worth. Uh, my channel, Military Industrial Museum, needed a little pizzazz, a little originality, and uh, I knew this would be something no one else had because uh, probably most of these tapes were destroyed. They came as a set, an audio component and a visual component. I don't have the visual component, nor do I have the machine in order to enjoy that aspect, so you're going to have to use your imagination. Uh, Alright, well, continuing. Oh, part of the reason I do this, I remember hip pocket training, both Navy and Army, um, where you just jibber-jabber about something that you know about. Maybe at some point in the future where I get more well-known, uh, people tune into my YouTube or make it somehow a record of it, and this will be the uh, training on the fly. But, uh... <clears throat> Who knows what they'll have for the visual section. Maybe they'll use hand puppets or draw designs in the dirt or something. Who knows? Anyway, enough of my blibber blabber. Constructing five positions. Part one. Lesson number zero one zero dash zero seven one dash one zero four five dash foxtrot. Let's get this show on the road. This is a two-part series. Might be more than that, but I found two parts, so I run all along. This is the first lesson in a two-lesson series on constructing fighting positions. It will teach you the when, where, and how of constructing defensive fighting positions. Part 2 will expand on the how portion. Before starting this lesson, you should have completed lesson number 4 of the series, entitled Hasty Fighting Positions. You should also have paper and pencil for taking tests and making notes. When you have these, please push the proceed button. After completing this lesson, you should be able to state the three basic requirements for a defensive fighting position. You should also be able to state the steps to take in constructing a fighting position to include partially clearing fields of fire, digging an armpit deep hole with frontal protection, completion of clearing fields of fire, and continuously camouflaging the position during the entire process. You can see the need for a good fighting position by looking at this poor one. These soldiers are exposed to enemy fire because they didn't dig in deep enough. The hole should be armpit deep to provide protection, which is the first basic requirement of a defensive fighting position. It should have frontal protection, which is also lacking here. The second basic requirement of a fighting position is that it should allow you to engage the enemy. This position does allow enemy engagement, but since it lacks good cover, it also allows the enemy to successfully engage you. The third basic requirement is that the position be concealed. The position shown here is exposed because the loose dirt was not hidden and natural camouflage was not used to prevent detection by the enemy. This is a well-constructed fighting position because it provides the soldiers with protection while allowing them to engage the enemy and it is concealed from enemy detection. You will be taught how it was constructed in this lesson. The next lesson, part two, will teach you how to improve and refine a position like this one. This position is difficult for the enemy to see 
because it is well concealed and presents a low profile while still affording adequate protection for its occupants. Frontal protection in this example allows for target engagement to the oblique and also to the front. Keep in mind, fighting positions must be mutually supporting. Let's break here for some questions. Here's an example of a good fighting position with its features numbered. Listed on the right are the three basic requirements of a good fighting position. Match each numbered feature with the requirement it fulfills. When you're ready to check your answers, press proceed. Under provides protection, you should have written number seven, which is the frontal protection. Under allows enemy engagement, you should have written number one and number three, as they depict clear fields of fire. Under provides concealment, you should have listed numbers two, four, five, six, seven, and eight. All surrounding trees, bushes, and your frontal protection provide concealment from the enemy. Now, let's construct a fighting position. Your squad leader will tell you the location of your fighting position and assign your sector of fire. Your squad leader picks the best position for you to have concealment while giving you good observation and sectors of fire which mutually support flanking positions. When the squad leader tells you the location of your position and your sector of fire, your first action must be to mark your sector of fire with stakes or rocks. After marking your sectors of fire, you partially clear your fields of fire. This will allow you to effectively return enemy fire if you're attacked while constructing your position. When partially clearing your sectors of fire, clear only the most critical areas at this time. Remove large branches and bushes. Remove just enough so that you can cover your sector of fire. If there is sod, remove it. Cut the sod deep enough to keep it living since you will later use it as camouflage. Then you dig a fighting position. Since the basic position is a two-man position, one soldier works while the other provides security. Or, if you are both working at once, make sure you're covered by another position that has already been dug in. Start digging your position behind any natural cover which is available such as trees or rocks. If there is no natural cover, build frontal protection as you dig. If you must build frontal protection, construct it by packing down the dirt which was removed in digging the hole. Dig deep enough during the initial hasty dig so that there is some protection for you both, with room for you to fire your weapons. Let's try an exercise to see if you've gotten everything. Your squad leader has pointed out the location of your fighting position, and he has also assigned your sector of fire. Write down what you would do now. When you're ready to continue, press proceed. You are correct if you wrote that you would quickly mark your sector of fire with stakes or rocks. Now, try this one. Write down the two things that are wrong with this fighting position. Press proceed when you're ready to continue. The first thing you should have spotted was that the fighting position has not been dug out. It should have been dug out to provide protection from enemy fire. The second thing you should have spotted is the frontal protection, which is not concealed. You could have mentioned that these soldiers didn't mark their sectors of fire and that they didn't pack down the dirt for their parapet. Once you have dug sufficiently to provide a hasty fighting position, you are ready to continue preparing your fighting position. Remember that the basic fighting position is the two-man position. Work on fighting positions is a continuing process, both on the position and its camouflage. Using these tasks as a guide, you'll be able to construct any fighting position. Now, 
Let's discuss the size of the hole. There are no set dimensions for your fighting position. However, there are some quick guidelines. The hole must be long enough to allow each soldier to fire around the frontal protection when not receiving effective small arms fire. Wide enough for two soldiers wearing load-bearing equipment and at least armpit deep. It should be as small as possible to afford maximum protection. The most critical dimension is the thickness of the frontal protection, which must be 18 inches of dirt in order to stop small arms fire. It must be high enough to cover the heads of the soldiers firing from the position and far enough in front of the hole to provide room for elbow rest and sector stakes to allow each soldier to fire to his flank. After you've marked off the outline of your position, you should have cut, dug, and stacked your sod. It should have been cut deep and as square as possible. This is so it will continue to live when you later use it to camouflage the frontal protection. You don't always have to use sod, but remember, broken leaves and branches will wilt and die. You have to keep replacing them, or you'll be giving the enemy a road map to your position. When you reach armpit depth, the hole is deep enough. This depth lowers your profile while still allowing you to fire your weapon. Now that you've constructed your frontal protection and dug out your position, it's time to complete clearing your field of fire. Be careful not to clear too many natural features, such as weeds or shrubs, because you don't want the enemy to see your location. Then, remove all signs of your work. Let's try a practice exercise. How deep should you dig your fighting position? Press proceed when you're ready to continue. You are correct if you wrote that it should be armpit deep. Has this soldier properly cleared his field of fire? Write down the reason for your answer, then press proceed when you're ready to go on with the lesson. You are correct if you wrote no. This soldier is too easily seen from the front because he has cleared too many natural features from his field of fire. Let's continue with another question, true or false. Once your position is camouflaged, you need not bother with the camouflage anymore. After you've written the answer, press proceed. The answer is false. Camouflage should be natural and made from things normally found in the immediate area that will blend in with the surroundings. Remember, cut foliage will die quickly but sod will remain alive and last longer. Since dead materials must be replaced, camouflaging is a continuing process. This position is improperly camouflaged. The neatly placed rocks easily identify the position from the front. The rocks don't blend in with the terrain. They were obviously put there by someone. Here, the piles of freshly dug dirt gives away the position. These soldiers should have done a better job camouflaging their position. They could have used leaves or branches from that big tree. You don't always have to use sod. Let's try a practice exercise. Select the position that has the best camouflage. Choose either position A, position B, or position C. When you've selected the best position, press the proceed button to continue. You were right if you wrote C. This position is well camouflaged and it cannot be seen from the front. Position A has no camouflage and position B is too easily identified since the frontal protection stands out in the open. Explain why you think this is a properly or improperly camouflaged position. Press proceed when you're ready to continue. You are right if you wrote that it is improperly camouflaged. The soldier covered the parapet with pine branches, 
And now his position sticks out like a sore thumb because there are not other pine branches in the immediate area. You should have also noticed that the sides of the parapet aren't camouflaged. We have covered five tasks in the construction of a fighting position. Let's do a final self-evaluation on them. These soldiers have been given their position location by their squad leader. They've just marked their sectors of fire with those stakes. What should they be doing next? You should have answered that they would partially clear their sectors of fire and begin digging their position in order to provide immediate protection. Remember that one man provides cover while the other digs. Next, how deep should you dig that position? Write down your answer and press proceed when you're ready to continue. You're right if you said that you must dig an armpit deep hole with frontal protection large enough to protect you and your buddy from enemy small arms fire. Which frontal protection is correct? Choose either position A, position B, or position C. Example B is correct because it is constructed of dirt and is thick enough to protect the soldier from small arms fire. The frontal protection in example A is too low and in example C it is not protective enough because it is only made of branches. All right, your sectors of fire are marked. You've partially cleared your fields of fire and your hole is dug out. What's the next job these soldiers must do? Press proceed when you've written your answer. You're doing just fine if you answered that your next task is to complete clearing your fields of fire. What's the next task after you clear your fields of fire? Press proceed when you're ready to continue. You must continue camouflaging the position. You want to be concealed from frontal view and from the air. The camouflage must look natural and blend in with the surrounding terrain. This concludes part one of constructing fighting positions. If you had any problems with it, go over it again. We'll see you again when you take part two of constructing firing positions. We'll be discussing some improvements and variations of fighting positions in that lesson. You have just completed a tech lesson. Please rewind your film cartridge and audio cassette. All right. Well, that's rewinding. I'm going to find part two and put that in and make this a uh, two for one since there's only two parts might as well be in the same deal right this had extra uh, extra <clears throat> title to it so I'll read that out first <clears throat> combat tactics and techniques constructing fighting positions part two tech lesson usually there's a number symbol but there's not zero one zero dash zero seven one dash one zero four six dash foxtrot so I'm waiting for the other tape to rewind, part one. We might do a little uh, side by side to show you that there are variations in these tapes for 
if there's a collector of these tapes, you know, there's different, uh, incarnation, incarnations, different renditions of these, uh, labels for these tapes. So here in a moment we'll do a little side by side. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm, uh, tired as usual. Go to school full, uh, part time, working full time, trying to do this YouTube channel, trying to keep up with day to day, daily grind. Very uh, taxing. It's for a good cause. You only live once, make every day count. It's not always possible, but do what you can. Okay, so here's a side by side. That's the one you just heard. This is the one we're going to put in right now. So you can see that there's little tricky uh, tango as far as um, how these tapes are. Maybe different manufacturers, maybe there are uh, different people making them, different machines, different label machines who knows we may never know part two I gotta figure out some kind of weird dance to do This is the sixth lesson in a seven-lesson series on combat tactics and techniques. Since it is the second part of the lesson in constructing fighting positions, you must have already successfully completed part one. If you have not, take it now. You will need paper and pencil. When you have these items, press the proceed button. Everyone needs protection. A boxer can protect himself by using his hands and arms. You can protect yourself by constructing a good fighting position. By the end of this lesson, you'll be a real pro at constructing a fighting position because you will be able to construct overhead cover. You'll be able to make improvements to your fighting position as time permits. You'll be able to correctly construct side and rear protection. And finally, you'll be able to construct camouflage to conceal you from air and ground observation. Now let's review what you learned in part one of this series. First, you remember that the location of your fighting position was designated by your fire team leader. And he also assigned you a sector of fire. The first step then is to mark your sector of fire. Next, you must partially clear fields of fire and dig a hasty position. Then you complete digging in as time and conditions permit. You should also build frontal protection as you dig if there isn't sufficient natural cover to protect your position. Next, complete clearing fields of fire by removing obstructions which would prevent a clear view of an approaching enemy. Finally, camouflage your position using natural materials in the area. Be careful not to take too much from any one area because the enemy can see where vegetation has been stripped. Now, let's see what a good fighting position looks like when it's finished. This position has natural front and rear protection, the boulder and the log. Without them, these soldiers would have built parapets and camouflaged them from enemy observation. Now that we've reviewed the first lesson, let's get on to the subject of overhead cover. Overhead cover is used as a protection from indirect fire. 
and it also conceals you from air observation. Now that you know how important overhead cover is, let's look at two basic ways you can construct overhead cover. Let's look at the fighting overhead cover approach first. It allows you to continue fighting while you're protected. To construct fighting overhead cover, place logs on top of each other along the entire length of the front and rear protection. The logs should be about four to six inches in diameter. Once your support base is in place, you position logs side by side across the support as shown here. Next, place a poncho or other waterproof material over the logs. You could use sea ration packing, packing material from your dragons or whatever else is available. Just be sure it's something that will shed water when it rains. When your waterproof cover material is in place, add six to eight inches of dirt then mold and blend it as much as possible to match the slope of the terrain. Then you apply natural camouflage to conceal your overhead cover. When this is completed, you will have protection against indirect fire fragmentation while still being able to fire at the enemy. Your total overhead cover thickness, which includes support, cover material, and dirt, should be about 14 inches. Now, let's continue with the second type of overhead cover, flank overhead cover, which is constructed to the side of the position. Flank overhead cover should be used when the fighting overhead cover would increase the silhouette of the position enough to make it easily spotted by the enemy. To construct flank overhead cover, begin at one end of your fighting position. Dig out to a depth of about 12 inches and save the sod for camouflage. Next, put the supporting logs, planks, or whatever is available across the area to support the rest of the overhead cover material. Using the dirt from the trench you dug, cover the top of the supporting material and then replace the sod and whatever camouflage is needed. Remember, make it look natural. The last step is to get into your fighting position and dig out a cave-like compartment under the supporting material. Make it large enough that the occupants of the position can use it at the same time. This completes the construction of flank overhead cover. Here are some additional tips for building your overhead cover. First, get your cover support material from places far to the rear of your defensive position. Your fire team leader or squad leader will normally point out locations for this. Never remove material from in front of your position except that which is necessary for clearing fields of fire. And don't take it from any place near your position which might reduce your natural concealment and expose your position to the enemy. As you dig your position, pile the dirt onto a poncho to save for reinforcing the overhead cover, for constructing front, rear, and side protection. The dirt you don't use should be removed and hidden. Your squad leader or fire team leader will select some place for you to hide the extra dirt. This should be some place where the dirt cannot be seen from either the ground or from the air, such as a depression in the ground, under foliage, or hidden behind walls where it cannot be detected by the enemy. By now, you're probably wondering which kind of overhead cover to construct in different situations. A few practice exercises will help you better recognize when to use the fighting overhead cover and when to use the flank overhead cover. What type of overhead cover would best fit in with this type of open level terrain? Write your answer, then press the proceed button. In open terrain, you should normally use flank overhead cover to blend in with the terrain. Look at this picture. Here, you are in the edge of a wooded area with trees and vegetation to the sides and behind you and overhead as well. What type of overhead cover would easily fit into this terrain? Write your answer, then press the proceed button. If you answered fighting overhead cover, you're correct. Fighting overhead cover is preferred whenever possible since it allows you to continue fighting. Now we'll discuss some ways you can improve your fighting position as time and priority of tasks permit. 
Write these down and we'll discuss them one at a time. Press the proceed button when you're ready to continue. One way to improve the position is to make a drainage trench. Do this by sloping the floor toward the center, then scoop out a shallow trench to direct the water to the front wall. Another improvement is a grenade sump, shown here in a cutaway view. Dig at a 45 degree angle as deep as you can with your entrenching tool. The mouth of the sump should be smooth and wide enough so that you can kick grenades into it easily. The next way you can improve your fighting position is to dig elbow holes. Elbow holes are used to aid you in firing your weapon. This easy improvement also helps you lower your silhouette. Put in limiting stakes to mark the left and right limits of your sector of fire. Aiming stakes are put in so you can fire accurately at dangerous approaches during periods of limited visibility. Rocks can be used if you don't have stakes. Be sure to conceal stakes or rocks so the enemy can't spot you. Spend your available time productively because no position is perfect. You should constantly be thinking of ways you can improve your position. Some soils are not well suited for a typical fighting position. For example, sandy soils can cave in easily whether they're wet or dry. Other soils generally won't cave in unless they get wet. One way to prevent cave-in is to strengthen or revet the sides of your position with cut saplings or other suitable materials. These materials might include such things as shell cases, ammunition boxes, sandbags, scrap metal, corrugated metal, scrap lumber, and the like. Of course, any revetting will be only as good as you make it. So far, we've learned several ways to improve your fighting position. It's time for a practice exercise to review what you've learned. What are some improvements that could be made to this fighting position? Write your answer, then press the proceed button. These are just a few of the improvements you could have listed. Hopefully you listed several more than these. Now, let's look at fighting position variation. This sequence will include the one-man fighting position and the modified two-man fighting position. The one-man fighting position can be used when restrictive terrain and sector coverage dictates its use. It's most commonly used by the squad leader to centrally position himself in the squad. It can be used by other members of the squad when directed by the squad leader. The standard two-man fighting position you've learned to construct covers sectors on both sides of the position. It also allows better communication and gives you a better chance of receiving aid from a buddy. Although the two-man position is standard and the most often used, it isn't always the best for some particular situations. One reason it isn't best is because you may not be able to cover your sector of fire. Now we will explain the modified two-man position. You can modify the two-man position by extending one or both ends of the position along the sides of the frontal protection. This allows each soldier maximum observation and fields of fire to the front. The additional space is also useful during rest or sleep periods, since one soldier can observe and cover the entire sector of fire while the other rests. Another advantage is that if you receive suppressive fire from the front, you can move back to gain the protection of the frontal cover like you would in the standard position. By moving about one meter, you can continue to select and engage targets to the front during lulls in the enemy fire. With proper use of the terrain, your squad's defensive position would normally consist of several modified two-man positions, separated two-man positions, and positions for any key weapons, such as machine guns and dragons. Now for some questions. Here is a fighting position. What should be done to make it a modified two-man fighting position? Write your answer, then press the proceed button. If you wrote that one or both ends would be extended around the frontal protection, you are right. There are two ways a soldier can shoot from a modified two-man fighting position. 
What are they? Press the proceed button when you've written down your answer. You can shoot to the front of the modified position and you have a field of fire to the flank. Flank and rear protection are our next topics. Natural protection is better when it's available. It takes less time to prepare and it's harder for the enemy to detect. It appears to be a natural feature because it is a natural feature. Flank and rear protection provides protection from enemy direct fire and the effects of friendly supporting fire. If natural features don't provide flank and rear protection for you, then you must construct them. Be sure to camouflage them as you see here. If you are in a situation where your position can be spotted from the air, you'll need to build overhead camouflage to break up shadows and hide your position. You can use nets, brush, loosely woven branches, and the like. Here are some questions for a self-evaluation of your basic skills in this portion of combat tactics and techniques. Here you see two pictures. One is open terrain, and the other is wooded terrain with heavy vegetation. Write down the type of overhead cover you would use to best fit each type of terrain. Press the proceed button when you're ready to continue. You should use flank overhead cover in open and level terrain, and fighting overhead cover in heavily vegetated terrain. Remember that whenever possible, fighting overhead cover is preferred because it allows you to continue fighting while being protected. Here you see that the modified two-man position allows these soldiers to fire to the front and to the flanks. What is another advantage of the modified two-man position? Write your answer, then press the proceed button. It allows one man to observe the front and cover both sectors of fire, while the other man eats or sleeps or works to improve the position. Did you get it right? Name two position improvements that can improve your ability to fire. Write them down and then press the proceed button. Digging elbow holes to stabilize your arms and lower your body position is one improvement. The other is to add limiting stakes and aiming stakes so that you can deliver accurate fire during periods of reduced visibility. This concludes the lesson on constructing fighting positions and improvements that you can make to them. If you did well on the self-evaluation questions, you should be ready to put the techniques you've learned into practice in the field. If you had difficulty with any of the points covered, why not retake the lesson to brush up on those points? You have just completed a tech lesson. Please rewind your film cartridge and audio cassette. Okay, that's the end of that. So, I hope you learned quite a bit. I know I did. Uh, I'm not going to stay in front of the camera the whole time. i got to make uh, triple dual purpose use of my time doing a couple household chores and things as these are going. I'm one of those people that love lectures and love listening to uh, audio uh, renditions of... Uh, you know, I, people talking. That's one of my base ways of learning. Is, uh, I'm always listening to the radio and whatever. And then um, when I find some interesting news, uh, I'll uh, internet search it, right? That way I, my hands are free. My ass isn't planted on a couch. Whoa. I was pressing the play backwards function. That's a pretty interesting function. Um, so anyway, uh, 
I'm always out and about doing things. I don't have TV anymore. My uh, ex-wife, she took my home theater system when I was in Iraq. I came back and uh, decided I'm not going to have anything nice like that again until I have better security. And so far, I haven't developed the best security. So, I'm going to be working on that. But, the uh, lemons to lemonade factor is I haven't developed a huge fat ass from a couch potato. I know a lot of returning soldiers have gotten fat and uh, sassy. And so I want to stay out of that category. So at any rate, uh, fighting positions. Uh, I didn't dig any fighting positions when I was in Iraq. Everything was already made or we were fighting uh, an unknown enemy, which means... Uh, the, the who knows where they're gonna come from and and like that. Uh, most of my so-called fine positions were armored vehicles like MRAPs and ASVs, things like that. So, but at any rate, uh, it's good to know. It's good to know all the different ways to do it. Um, and that's the point of this series. I'm gonna try to handpick some stuff that might be more applicable to guys that are in Afghanistan right now and maybe some way somehow it will be of use to them or maybe not but I'll tell you what we're going to have some kind of war uh, because there's a lot of ordinary people in the world and other reasons so uh, the straight basics besides the technology that won't change um, the thing I can imagine is maybe having a robot gun now in fighting positions where you're just in a climate control cubicle somewhere, shoot, you know, with your robot gun, and if something happens, the robot gun dies, not you, but, you know, but UAV style. But who knows where it's going. May not even need an operator at some point. It'll just be all computer operated, robot operated, whatever. Pretty interesting, so... Anyway, that's the end of this. Gotta get this up on YouTube. I gotta hit the sack. I am more tired than I need to be. So, at any rate, stay well, stay safe, stay educated. Learn all you can, because you're going to be forgetting stuff. And the point is, learn more than you're forgetting, so you're not in a deficit. Okay. You stay yourself. Take care. Long goodbye, suck. <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching my videos. I appreciate it. At least somebody, many new, uh, is watching these. So, okay, I'm making an ass out of myself. Time to end it. Uh, but uh, respect is earned. It's not given.